To watch these important lessons, subscribe to DP Education's YouTube channel right now. Click on the bell icon to stay updated on the latest lessons. Sri Lanka's largest free online school, DP Education. Hello, my dear students. Welcome to today's lesson. Today also, I am going to continue with the questions of Part B in Paper 2 of your GCE O Level 2020 Science Examination. So, in the previous chapter, I discussed up to the sixth question. Now, you all know here out of from question numbers 5 to 9, you need to select three questions and you have to write the answers in the booklet provided to you. So, in regard to that, I have discussed the first two questions of part B. Now, question number 7. So, question number 7A, the following activities were done by a student at home using a glass hand lens. So, you all are familiar with hand lenses. You all know that normally we use a biconvex lens as the hand lens. So, here, if we look at the activity, activity 1, reading a label with very small letters. Yes, that's the main purpose of using a hand lens. Now, that is a simple microscope. You all know that because it uses only one lens. If there are small letters, they will be enlarged so that you can read them more clearly. That's the first activity. Then activity two, burning a piece of dry cotton wool by solar rays. That is also something you are familiar with. You have done this activity in your smaller grades. And then, Activity 3, obtaining an image of a tree in the compound on a wall in the house. So, that is also an activity that we did in the lab. So, first what I will do is I will go to the next slide where I explain the three diagrams related to this and then we will answer the questions. So, here. Now, when the object is between the lens and its focal point, that is the first diagram, you all are familiar with this. So, here you can see this is a biconvex lens. So, since it is a biconvex lens, now you all know biconvex lens, it converges the rays onto the focal point. So, because of that, we also call it as the converging lens. You are familiar with that converging lens. So, by convex lens or the converging lens, now here you can see this is the optical center there, C, and this is the object. When the object is between the optical center, C, and the focal point, F, what do you get? You get an enlarged image. The size of the image is larger than the size of the object. So, you can see here this is the image that is enlarged. So, that is how we use a hand lens to read small letters, the first instance. So, here you can clearly see that the object has to be between the lens or the optical center. Here it is marked as C, it can also be marked as O, you can remember that. So, optical center and the focal point. So, that you can see the enlarged at the same time upright image. Is that clear students? Then the second instance, you can see here, now when you use a hand lens to burn a piece of paper but, or a little bit of cotton wool, anything that can catch fire quickly. So here of course, the rays that are coming from the sunlight are parallel rays and like I told you all, here you can see the parallel rays converge onto the focal point. So, here the object that has to be burned should be at the focal point where all the rays converge. Then, of course, you can burn small pieces of paper or cotton wool. Is that clear? Then, the next diagram, the third activity, here you can see an object that is out far away a distant object or a far away object, a tree outside the window. If you use it, use a by convex lens to observe it, you will get an image like this on the screen. Where the image, it will be a clear image, it will be inverted and also it would be smaller than the object, a diminished image. And where does that image form? You all know it will form on the 
focal point or the focus. That is why the distance between the lens and the image will be the focal length. This is how we measure the focal length of a particular biconvex lens. So you are familiar with all three activities and I am sure you can understand that we need to use a biconvex lens as the hand lens. Is that clear student? So then if we answer the question, the first question, name the type of the lens that is used as the hand lens. So as we saw, it has to be a biconvex lens. So here we can write the answer as biconvex lens. Or you can write it as convex lens. By convex, convex lens, both are okay. You can also write it as convex lens. Or else, like I told you all, since the by convex lens converges the light rays onto the focus, we call it the converging lens. So you can write that answer also, converging lens. Converging lens. So you can write any one of the answers like I have been doing. I have written all the possible answers that are correct. So you can write one of them. You can either write by convex lens or convex lens or converging lens. So that is in relation to the three activities. Reading a label with very small letters, burning a piece of dry cotton wool by solar rays and obtaining an image of a tree in the compound on a wall in the house. Is that okay student? So then I'll move on to the next question. So these are the diagrams related to the three activities that I explained to you. So now second part of the question, again the same activities are given to you here. Second part, between which two points related to the lens should the label be placed in activity 1? So we saw that clearly, no students, in the previous slide, I showed it to you all. Here you can see, here we need to place it between the optical center and the focal point. So that is where you need to have the label. Between the optical center and focal point or you can write it as focus. This is one way of writing it or else you can say between the lens and focus. That is another way of writing the answer. So this is one, this is another method. The third one, you can even write it as between O and F or you can write it as between C and F. So any one of the answers. First one between the optical center and focal point or focus. Then between the lens and focus or there are also you can say focal point. Or you can write it as between O and F where O denotes, denotes the optical center. And also you can say between C and F. He also C refers to the optical center. So one of these methods can be used. You can write one of these answers. So basically the object has to be between the focus and the lens. So that you get an enlarged upright image. But that is a virtual image. You all know that. Right? So there you will get an enlarged upright image. So that you can read the letters larger. The letters will look larger than their normal size. So that you can read them clearly and that is why we call it as a simple microscope. So you all can write these students or else what you can do is you can draw the ray diagram. The diagram that I have drawn here. Now this diagram also can be 
drawn. Here I have drawn these to you all where you use it as a hand lens. Hand lens activity 1. So I am not going to redraw this but you all know this diagram. You have to show the object between focus and the lens and also you need to show two rays. Now here you can see from the object there is a ray going parallel to the principal axis that refracts through the focal point. Therefore, when you extrapolate it, you get the ray going that way and the ray going to through the optical center that is through the center of the lens that refracts back in the same path. So, when you extrapolate the two rays, they meet at this point where you get the image. So, there you can see the image is larger than the object and also it is upright, the same direction. So, that is how you can draw the ray diagram. So, this diagram also can be given as the answer for the question. So, here either you write this or else you can or you can draw the ray diagram. So, here of course shown in the previous slide. In the previous slide. So, since I have given you all the diagram, I am not redrawing it, but you all can draw this diagram as well. So, to explain the answer to this question, between which two points related to the lens should the label be placed in activity 1? You can either write the position or you can draw it and there as the object you have to mark it, it is the label, label between focus and lens. Is that clear student? Then of course the answer will get the full marks. So with that I will move on to the next question. This is part 3. So here also the introduction is given, the three activities are given to you and part 3 of the same question. Indicate by a ray diagram how light rays travel through the lens in activity 2. So here of course you have to indicate by a ray diagram how the rays travel through the lens in activity 2. Activity 2 burning a piece of dry cotton wool by solar rays that also I explained to you in the diagram but here as the answer you have to draw the diagram. So there of course we can show the biconvex lens that way and then you need to draw parallel rays. They should all converge onto one point and the important thing is you have to show the direction of the rays and here you all know through the lens it will refract. So this is where you will have the cotton wool. You can draw the diagram this way. Main thing is these should be parallel rays because the solar rays are going to be parallel. They have to converge onto the object. Or else what we can do is you can show it at an angle also because the rays are coming from the sun. These are parallel rays. The rays will converge onto one point. That way also you can show. So here we have the cotton wool. And here also the direction of the rays is very important. So it can be this diagram or the second diagram. It doesn't matter which diagram you use. You have to use the biconvex lens. You have to show the parallel rays. So here if you want you can even write it as sunlight. 
and then you have to show that the rays are converging onto one point. He also, I have shown the direction of the rays and the converging rays. Is that clear? So without the direction of the arrow, if you don't put the arrow heads, then of course it doesn't show the direction of the rays, then you will not be getting the full mark. Only if you draw with the direction that is using the arrow head, then you will get the full marks for the diagram. Is that clear, students? So you can draw one of the two diagrams there. So with that, I'll move on to the next question. Again, the A part, fourth part of that question, the same activities are given to you here. Then the fourth one. Instead of the hand lens, what type of a mirror can be used to carry out activity 2? Now activity 2 is again burning a piece of dry cotton wool by solar rays. So this is the concept of solar cookers also. Now in this instance we use the biconvex lens. Similar to that what can you use? If it is a mirror, now this was a converging lens. So we need to use a converging mirror. I will explain that in the next diagram. Now here you can see to converge a parallel beam of light after reflection, what do we use? We use a concave mirror. Concave mirror or a converging mirror. Here also you can see the parallel rays come when they fall on the mirror they reflect in such a way. Here the difference is they reflect. Earlier it was refraction lens. Here mirror reflection. So the rays reflect and they converge onto the focal point. So here if you have the cotton wool there. If you had the cotton wool there. You can burn it. That is how they use the solar cookers. No? You said the con cave mirror in such a way that the vessel will be placed near the focal point. So all the radiation will be converging onto that and there the water, if you have water in the vessel, it will become hot. The same way you can have the cotton wool there. So instead of by convex lens, you can use a concave mirror. So instead of the hand lens, what type of a mirror can be used to carry out activity too? You can use a concave mirror. Concave mirror. You cannot use a convex mirror. Why? Because it is a diverging mirror. The rays are reflected away. So there is no real focus. So because of that you cannot use that. You can use a concave mirror. I am sure you all can remember that. So with that I will move on to the next question. So that is part 5 of the same question. He also the same activities are given to you. The introduction of the question. Then the fifth one. State two characteristics of the image formed in activity 3. So what is activity 3? Obtaining an image of a tree in the compound on a wall in the house. So I have the diagram in the next slide. Now here you can see. Obtaining the image of a tree that is outside the room onto the wall of the house. So there, how do you get the image? You get it on the focal point that you know. And here you can see it's a very clear image. Very important, it is inverted and it is diminished or smaller than the size of the object. Is that clear? It is an inverted image. It is a diminished image and you are getting it on the wall. So it is actually a real image. Real image. So those are the properties that you can write. So if we go back to the question. Now here you all know students how the rays come. These are parallel rays. They come and converge onto the wall. And the image forms on the focus or the focal point. So if we go back to the question. So here state two characteristics of the image formed in activity 3. So like I showed you all you can write any two characteristics. I will write all three. You can write any two. 
So the characteristics are it is a real image, it is an inverted image, you can say inverted or inverted image and also you can say diminished, diminished or you can say smaller than the size of the object. So there are three properties. It is real, inverted, diminished. Instead of diminished, you can write smaller than the size of the object. So out of these three, you can write any two characteristics. So here, any two characteristics. Then you will get the marks. So that is the answer for this question. Characteristics of the image formed when you observe a tree that is in the compound on a wall in the house. So this is how we got the image and I am sure you all can understand the characteristics. So with that I will move on to the next question. So the same question, the same activities are given to you. The sixth part of the question. Name two instruments that are made using lenses of the type used for hand lenses. So using biconvex lenses, the devices, instruments that are there. So first I will move on to the next slide where I show you all the instruments that are mostly familiar to you all and then we will write the answers. So here you all can See students. Now this one, first one is a camera. Now camera uses a biconvex lens. So similar to our eye, there is an image formed on the film. So that is how we get the images, pictures taken. So there, there is convex lens. Then here you can see this is an overhead projector. Now you all know why we use an overhead projector, OHPs to project a slide or project a, an image onto the screen so that everyone, if it is in a conference hall or a big classroom, you all can see the image larger, larger image. So for that we use the overhead projectors that use the biconvex lenses. Then here you can see, now if you want to observe the planets or the stars, what do we use there? The telescope. Normally the telescope can use two biconvex lenses or a biconvex lens and a biconcave lens. So either way it will have at least one biconvex lens. Then here this is another thing that is familiar to you. We use it in the lab, the compound microscope. In a compound microscope there are always two lenses. The eyepiece, here it is the eyepiece and the objective. Here you can see this is the eyepiece and the objectives with different powers so that you see an enlarged image. Now here you can see one biconvex lens, the other biconvex lens. You have the small object, the image is formed here and that acts as the object for the second lens and with that the image, a larger image is formed, enlarged image. So even in a compound microscope, we use biconvex lenses. Then this one, when you have the problem of long sight, you can see far away objects clearly, but you can't see close objects clearly. Then what do you need to use? You need to use a meniscus convex lens or even a biconvex lens. So there as the spectacle lens, you can use the convex lens or even as a contact lens. Contact lens also a biconvex lens can be used. So these are all different instances where the biconvex lens can be used. Out of this according to the question you need to write only two answers. I will write all of the examples. So if I go back to the question name two instruments. So you are supposed to 
write only two instruments, I will write all the possible instruments there. So there are spectacles. Spectacles can be used. Oils, contact lens, lens, then camera, then there is the overhead projector, overhead projector, telescope, or even the compound microscope. So here again, you need to write only two instruments. You can write spectacles, contact lens, then camera, overhead projector, telescope or compound microscope. Is that clear, students? So those are instruments that use biconvex plate. So with that, I'll move on to the next question. This is part B of the same question. So I have been discussing the seventh question with you all. This is part B. When brakes are applied to a normal motor vehicle at run, its kinetic energy is lost due to friction. Now when there is a vehicle moving, when an object is moving, you all know the energy, mechanical energy is in the form of kinetic energy. Kinetic energy depends on mass and velocity. Kinetic energy is equal to half mv squared. So you all know that. But when up the brake is applied, so they are, you are retarding the movement of the vehicle. So when there is brake applied, the velocity decreases and the kinetic energy is lost due to friction because the vehicle tires have to be stopped there is friction so against friction this particular kinetic energy is lost so normally when it is a sudden thing you can hear the sound also you can you can hear a screeching sound sometimes and also there is certain amount of heat energy always when there is friction involved there is heat energy produced and also it can be stored as potential energy. So either way, the kinetic energy is lost due to friction. So the first question, first part, brakes are applied to a motor vehicle of mass 1000 kilogram when running at a speed of 20 meters per second. So there they have given you the mass of the vehicle and the speed of the vehicle. First one, A part, calculate the kinetic energy of the vehicle at the instance just before applying brakes. So kinetic energy, you know the equation, I mentioned that to you all. Kinetic energy, energy is equal to E k kinetic, that is half m v squared. So that is kinetic energy is equal to half into mass is 1000 kilogram into V squared. Here the speed is given as 20 meters per second into 20 meters per second. You can substitute with the unit even if you leave out the unit that is fine. So because of that I will write the units within brackets. But you have to make sure if there are any unit conversions, you have to make that. Now here of course there are no unit conversions, kilogram, meters per second, they are all standard unit. So here students, you all can see when we simplify that after you simplify half and 20, it becomes 10. So 10 into 20 into 1000, it becomes 200,000. 200,000 joules. Now this can be converted to kilojoules. So you all know 1000 joules is 1 kilojoules. So the answer will become 200 kilojoules. So you can either write it in joules or directly you can write the answer in kilojoules or like I have shown, you can show the conversion. 
and when you do the calculation students you don't have to always substitute with the unit you can directly substitute it and do the calculation so the kinetic energy possessed by the motor vehicle before brakes are applied is equal to 200,000 joules or 200 kilo joules so with that I will move on to the next question so B part name two forms of energy to which the kinetic energy lost gets converted when applying brakes so I mentioned this to you all two forms of energy now one I told you all it can become sound energy a part of it can be sound energy or else it can become heat energy so one form is sound energy the other form is heat energy that is mainly due to friction in addition to this this particular energy can be converted to mechanical energy when we say mechanical energy now one form is the kinetic energy but it can be converted to potential energy when we say potential energy it is usually the elastic potential energy because when there is brakes applied when the vehicle stops there are the shock absorbers these shocks they have a spring in them so in those springs it can be stored as elastic potential energy so here we also can write the answer as mechanical energy mechanical energy then elastic potential energy energy or you can say energy stored in shocks of the or we can say energy stored in springs of shocks of the vehicle But here also students when you are writing now if you write mechanical energy and elastical elastic potential energy they mean the same thing and here elastic potential energy energy stored in springs of shocks of the vehicle that also refer to the same thing. So it is always you have to write sound energy heat energy or one of the last three forms then you will be giving two different answers so basically there are three different forms of energy sound energy heat energy mechanical elastic potential or energy stored in the springs they are all related to one another so it's always better to give two different answers that will be more better is that clear students so that is the answer for this particular question name two forms of energy to which the kinetic energy lost gets converted when applying brakes so with that i'll move on to the next question so here we have the second part a part of the kinetic energy lost when applying brakes to an electric motor vehicle is converted to electrical energy and its battery is charged so that is also a possibility now when there is brakes applied the kinetic energy is lost now earlier we said it is being converted to different forms but here it is converted to electrical energy so that is useful it can be used to drive the vehicle later so there are batteries being charged when brakes are being applied so how is that possible Name, name the equipment that converts kinetic energy to electrical energy here. So you are familiar with one form of instrument, the equipment. What is that? A dynamo. A dynamo converts kinetic energy to electric energy. So that is one equipment. 
dynamo. Under electromagnetic induction, we have discussed the function of dynamo. Then what else? There is the electric converter. So another equipment present in vehicles is the electric generator. Now that is also similar to a dynamo, but that is a particular equipment in the engine that converts kinetic energy to electric energy. So that is also another answer. It can be a dynamo, an electric generator, electric generator that usually converts chemical energy to electric energy. All, and also there is the alternator. Alternator is another equipment. Alternator. Alternator is another equipment that converts, that is part of the engine of the motor vehicle that converts kinetic energy to electric energy. So you can write any one of the three equipments. Name the equipment that converts kinetic energy to electrical energy here. Dynamo, electric generator or alternator. Is that clear student? So then, be part of the question. Name and describe briefly the phenomenon of converting lost kinetic energy of the vehicle to electrical energy. So I mentioned that when I told you all about dynamos, electromagnetic induction. Now this concept electromagnetic induction, what is that? There should be a magnetic field, there should be a conductor placed perpendicular to the magnetic field and when there is a magnetic flux, that is either the conductor can move in relation to the magnet when the magnet is stationary or the magnet should move when the conductor is stationary. But they have to be all perpendicular. The direction of the magnetic field, the direction of the conductor and the direction of the movement all have to be perpendicular. Then only you can use the Fleming's right hand rule. So here the middle finger is the current flow, direction of the current flow. The index finger is the direction of the magnetic field and thumb is the direction of the motion. So when there is a magnetic field and the conductor placed in the stationary magnetic field starts moving, there is a magnetic flux. Or the other way, if the coil or the conductor is stationary and the magnet moves, that also generates a magnetic flux. So because of this magnetic flux, there will be an induced electromotive force. And the induced electromotive force gives rise to an induced current. So that is how electricity is generated. So from kinetic energy, electric energy is generated. That is electromagnetic induction. That is what we need to write here. Name and describe briefly the phenomenon of converting lost kinetic energy of the vehicle to electrical energy. So here, electromagnetic induction magnetic induction so here we can say generation of induced electro motive force Force, or you can say EMF or you can say potential difference across the terminals of a conductor placed in a placed in a varying magnetic field 
So when we say varying magnetic field itself, it means either the magnet has to move when the conductor is stationary or the conductor has to move when the magnet is stationary. So then only there will be a change in the magnetic field. So both those have to be included. There is generation of electromotive force or you can say induced ele electromotive force or EMF or potential difference across the terminals of a conductor placed in a varying magnetic field. Is that okay students? So that is the explanation for electromagnetic induction. That is the concept by which a dynamo functions. I'm sure you all can understand that. So with that students, I'll move on to the next question. C part, name the equipment that converts the electrical energy supplied by the battery to kinetic energy required to run the vehicle. So the electrical energy to kinetic energy. What is that? It is a motor. You can just write it as a motor or you can say alternating current motor or it can be a direct current motor. Motors can function. There are two types of motors. We have discussed the function of a direct current motor. But there are alternating current motors also. So you can write the answer as a motor alternating current motor, AC motor or a DC motor. Any one of the answers is correct. So here of course that is the opposite of electromagnetic induction. You supply a current, there is magnetic field and there is a conductor. When the current flows through that conductor placed in the magnetic field, there is a force generated. This force gives rise to rotation. So that is how the motor functions. So the answers here, you can write motor, DC motor or you can write AC motor. So in all these questions students, I am writing all the possible answers. You only need to write one or two depending on how many they have asked. So here of course name the equipment that converts the electrical energy supplied by the battery to kinetic energy required to run the vehicle. So we have discussed these electric motors in vehicles. So there, there is this function. You can also write the answer as electric motor as well. I'll write that also, electric motor. Electric motor. So any one of the answers is correct. Then, the D part of the question. The electromotive force of a battery used in electric motor vehicles is about 400 volts. This is composed of a set of cells where the electromotive force of one cell is 4 volts. So here you all can see this is a compound cell. Now you don't have just one single cell. Many cells are combined together and you get the cell that gives about 400 volts of potential difference. But one cell is 4 volts. What is the minimum number of cells required to make this battery? Now to get this battery, you know students, we have to connect the cells in a series manner so that the potential difference gets added up. And it has to be the alternate connection where you have the terminals, positive, negative, positive, negative, that manner. So the potential difference gets added up. So you get the sum of the potential differences of the individual cells. But here each cell is 4 volts. We need a total of 400 volts. So you need to calculate the number of cells. So here number of cells. There is no specific equation but you can understand to get 400 volts from a cell that can give out 4 volts, you can easily find the number of cells by dividing 400 volts divided by 4 volts. So that is going to be 100 cells. So you will need 100 cells. Minimum number of cells required to make this battery is going to be 100 cells. You are familiar with this concept. We have discussed this when we discussed electricity. 
if you want to get higher potential difference. Now you all know normally we use a 1.5 volt battery. So if you want, as a note I will just explain this to you all. Now normally we have a 1.5 volt battery. If you want 4.5 volts, what do we do? We connect three such batteries in a series manner. Each one 1.5. So the total potential difference would be 4.5 volts because all of them get added up. This is how we connect simple cells. So each cell giving a potential difference of 1.5 volt. So if you want 4.5 volts, you connect them this way. Here we have three cells connected like that. But in the question, we need to connect 100 cells, each one giving out a voltage of 4 volts to obtain 400 volts. Is that clear, students? So that is the seventh question of your paper, students. This is part B. You all are familiar with this. They say type questions where you need to write the answers in the booklet provided to you and you have to answer only three questions. But here I am discussing all the questions with you all. This is the seventh question that is related to a physics lesson. Now you saw the question. They are all physics related units. So with that students, I am going to end this chapter and in the next chapter I will discuss question number 8 with you all. To watch these important lessons, subscribe to DP Education's YouTube channel right now. Click on the bell icon to stay updated on the latest lessons. Sri Lanka's largest free online school, DP Education.